Sandbottom here, actually. Now, what of golf balls and hippopotamuses got in common? You don't know, do you? Well, I'm going to tell you right now with this fantastic tale. Thank you. Now, you see, I've got this business right, obviously only part-time because of um, show business commitments. Now, what I do is, once a week, I go down to Timpley Golf Course and I go in the long grass there and I look for golf balls. Because I don't know if you've ever seen that game, Golf. They have like a big bag with wheels on it and uh, sticks with a big end. And they knock these golf balls into holes about the size of, uh, oh, an orange actually. And I don't mean cordial. But they're not very good, these golfers, because they don't always get them in the hole. Sometimes they go into the long grass. And uh, they don't bother looking for them, they just get a brand new one out. Now this is where I come in, you see, because I go looking in the long grass for the lost golf balls. And then I nip down to the clubhouse where the golfers live, that's when they're not playing golf for going home. And I sell them back to them at a special reduced rate. Now this sort of job, by the way, is ideal for anybody, because you don't need to pass any old levels or tests of anything, and it can make you a millionaire, i.e. A brand new golf ball costs about a pound. Now I sell them back to the golfers for their uh, 5p, right? So all I have to do is sell 20 million golf balls and I'll be a millionaire. Brilliant, eh? So anyway, I'm down on Timpley Golf Course, right, looking in the long grass for the balls, when suddenly I hear a noise behind me, a sort of... <laughs> and I immediately think to myself, Blimey, somebody's trying to muscle in on my uh, golf ball millionaire racket here. Anyway, I span round, right? But there was nobody there. And then I hear it again. <laughs> and I think to myself, either that is a very big frog, or else uh, a little frog with a big amplifier and microphone. Then out at the corner of my eye, I see something moving in the long grass. And I shout, Halt! Who goes there? And whoever it is, right, they just stand perfectly still. And then I see two very big eyes. And then I see a very big green nose. And then I see a very big mouth with a gigantic pink tongue inside with a load of golf balls on it. And I think to myself, blimey, it's a giant golf ball eating frog. Eh, uh, probably from outer space. Anyway, it wasn't. It was just one of them uh, hippopotamuses. Have you seen them? They've got like four legs and they uh, do a lot of swimming. Anyway, this one was disturbing my business by eating all my stock. Hey, you, I shouted. Leave off my golf balls, you cheeky young scamp. But it just carried on chewing them. Why, why don't you go back to wherever you live, actually? Scotland, uh, South America or the North Pole or wherever it is you come from. Then I suddenly realised. How did a hippopotamus end up on Timpley Golf Course? I mean, it couldn't have flown because uh, they don't have wings, do they? Or they don't even have pockets for keeping money in to buy aeroplane tickets. And even if they won the tickets in a special competition just for hippopotamuses, then they're so big and fat that the aeroplane wouldn't even be able to take off the ground, would it? I was convinced this was no ordinary hippopotamus. It must therefore come from another world. A far distant galaxy where hippopotamuses eat golf balls and go. <laughs> now, don't get me wrong, I'm not a sensation seeker, but here was my chance for me to get on John Craven's news round on the front cover of Luke Inn and win a Blue Peter match all in one go. So, this hippopotamus was now officially mine, i.e., Finders keepers uh, of hippopotami and uh, possession of hippopotami is uh, nine tenths of the law. Brilliant. Eh? Now, if you're going to keep one of them hippopotamuses, there are three golden rules that you must remember. And number one is always give your hippopotamus a fantastic name. So, without more ado, Des and myself set off in the direction of our house. And we're just on our way round the corner of our street when we met Roger. Now, Roger is the boy who lives next door to me, and he's one of my best friends, as well as Paul McCartney, that is, and he's also in my gang. Uh, Roger, that is, not Paul McCartney. 
Uh, but if you're listening to this, Paul, you're quite welcome to join me, gang. We meet uh, every night after tea in the shed. Uh, oh, and don't forget to bring your ten pence subs, right? And the ten pence is payable by everyone in my gang. So don't think we want you in the gang, Paul, just for your money. And anyway, uh, the money goes on lemonade and twiglets for me gang nosh. So you get it back in a way. Uh, except for little Frank, that is. Uh, he's my ventral Chris puppy. And he has to sit and watch us eat because uh, he can't eat because uh, he's made of cardboard. Brilliant, eh? Anyway, as I say, we just met Roger. That's a funny looking dog you've got there, Frank, said Roger. Oh, well, you would think that, wouldn't you? Because you're only seven years old and it would take uh, a man of the world, actually, like myself, to know what it really was. And anyway, why aren't you at school? Oh, I'm on my dinner break, actually, Frank. So go on, tell us, what is it? Well, actually, Roger, it's a giant golf ball-eating uh, hippopotamus called Des from outer space. Oh, and where did you get it from then, Frank? Well, you see, Roger, I've got this business, right, which involves going in the long grass on Simply Golf Course and looking... Hey, oh, did you say dinner time? Blimey, if I'm not back in time for my dinner, my mum will go up the wall and across the ceiling. And with that, I dashed off with Des at about uh, a thousand miles an hour, when suddenly I stopped. Because I'd remembered the second most important golden rule that you must remember when keeping a hippopotamus, which is never, under any circumstances, let your mum know you've got a hippopotamus, especially if it's from outer space. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying you should deceive your mum, but it's just that you know what mums are like. Who's going to take it for a walk? Who's going to clean it out? Who's going to feed it when we're on holiday? You know what mums are like. I mean, obviously, I'll have to let her know sometime. Uh, I mean, she'll probably see me anyway on News at 10 with Des. But obviously, uh, we'll have to pre-record that because uh, I go to bed at 9 o'clock. So, I tie Des up to the lamppost, right, outside next door but once, and in to the house I go. Hello, Mum. Uh, I'm sorry I'm late for my dinner, but um, to tell you the truth, Mum, um, I've been... Uh, oh, yes, I've been helping the FBI police, right, catch a spy. And I had to go down to the police station to help them put um, the uh, other handcuffs on him. That's right, Mum. But it was all right, because she wasn't in, right? She just pinned this note to the wall, which said, Dear Francis... Oh, I do wish you wouldn't call me that. Dear Francis... Your dinner is on the kitchen table. When you've eaten it, please finish tidying your bedroom. Yours, Mum. Oh, blimey. She's been up to me bedroom, so I ran upstairs as fast as I could go, right, to make sure she's not found her hair dryer, which uh, I've just modified, actually, to help me win next week's blow football final. I mean, I'll put it back as it was, but only when I've got the cup on my mantelpiece. Panic over. The hair dryer was still hidden undiscovered behind my wardrobe. And I was just admiring the craftsmanship on the hairdryer when... <laughs> oh, crikey. It must be a gang of international terrorists smashing up our kitchen. They're probably looking for my mum's secret recipe for told in the old to uh, give the Western world a tummy bob. <laughs> Only joking. My mum makes fantastic told in the old, actually. Anyway, I got down into the kitchen just in time to see Des wolfing down the last of my cauliflower. Brilliant! And he ate cauliflower. But what was all that broken wood under Des? Oh, japers! He'd climbed up on the kitchen table, right, and he'd crunched it to splinters. I'm for the eye jump now, and look at those muddy feet marks. I, I'm in big trouble. I didn't realise just how muddy it was uh, down in the long grass today. So, Bath, I said to Des, pointing upstairs, and I'll clean all this up later. And off we went to the bathroom. Well, I had had my doubts, right? But the way Des ate that shampoo, bottle and all, was living proof that he was from outer space. I was going to be more famous than Prince Charles, Bob Geldof and Captain Kirk put together. Now, I'd just gone into my mum's bedroom, right, to borrow a, a big bed sheet to dry Des off, as he'd swallowed the towel as well, when, oh no, it's my mum. I caught a glimpse of her opening the garden gate, so I ran downstairs as fast as I could, and I put the bolt on, and I got in the kitchen to clean up all the broken wood, and I could hear my mum twisting and turning the key and bumping the door trying to get in. Um, who is it? I shouted, picking up the bits of their kitchen table and hiding them in the fridge. Francis! Open this door at once, my mum shouted. Um, not until I know who it is, mum, I answered as I mopped uh, the mud off the floor. It's your mum, 
Now open this door at once. Um, have you got any identification, please, Mum? I'll give you identification when I get in there. What are you up to, Francis Sidebottom? Oh, you could be a burglar pretending to be me, Mum, for all I know. Uh, and you said never let anyone in until you know exactly who it is. Brilliant. Got her. She couldn't answer that, could she? Uh, so, Mum, um, what have you got to say to that then, eh, Mum? 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 Oh, blimey. She's going round the back. So quick as a flash, I'm upstairs and I heard Des into my bedroom. Where can I hide him? He can't go under the bed because there's all the bits of broken lawnmower there. Oh, I know. I'll put him in the wardrobe. Well, have you ever tried to get a hippopotamus in a wardrobe? I pushed and I pushed. Oh, no. I can hear me mum opening the back door. I kept pushing and I pushed. Frank, where's my kitchen table? Oh, blimey, I thought I was still pushing. Eh, uh, to tell the truth, Mum, eh, um, it looked a bit, eh, uh, that it needed, eh, uh, modernising, actually. Oh, that's right, the man from Timperley Table Company called, and he, eh, uh, he said we'd been selected from thousands to have our kitchen table modernised. Absolutely for free, Mum. Fantastic, eh? Brilliant. She's fallen for it. And with a great big cruncher, Des went into the wardrobe. Eh? That's funny, I thought. Hippos don't go cruncher, do they? Oh, no! Five years of work on my radio control Thunderbird 2 model with a detached pod and Des had just sat on it. Which, incidentally, is rule number three. Never put a hippopotamus in a wardrobe until you've taken out your Thunderbird 2 model first. Frank! came a shout. Uh, yes, Mum? What's all this wood in our fridge? Oh, er... Uh, what one's that then, Mum? Our fridge, Frank, it's full of wood. Eh, wood? Did you say wood, Mum? Frank, what's all this wood doing in our fridge? Oh, no messing this time. Oh, oh, that wood. You know, I wasn't quite sure which wood you meant, Mum. Francis Sidebottom, I'm just nipping next door to Mrs Gregory's, and when I get back, I want all this wood out of the fridge and my kitchen table back where it belongs, and I want it all laid out, ready for tea. Do I make myself clear? Yes, Mum. Now, transferring the wood out of the fridge and into the oven was dead easy. But where was I going to get a new kitchen table from? And how on earth am I going to get Des down to the TV studios without my mum catching me? Well, they don't call me Brain of Britain for nothing, you know. In fact, they don't call me Brain of Britain at all, actually. Which is odd, because I just had the most brilliant brainwave ever. Now, getting Des out of the wardrobe was even harder than getting him in. And the fact he'd got my best suit on didn't help, and he'd ripped it at all the seams. But I was too busy to notice, cos I was hatching out my master plan. Now, I got Des into the kitchen, and I told him to stand as still as possible. And then, I covered him with my mum's biggest tablecloth, and... <laughs> one brand new kitchen table! Now, I'd just finished balancing the plates and forks on it, etc., when in walks my mum. Oh, what's happened to my kitchen table, Frank? She said, looking at it in total disbelief. It's a bit lumpy, isn't it? She said, shaking her head. Oh, yes, I know, Mum. That's exactly what I said to the man from Timply Table Company when he brought it me back. But he assured me that they're all arranged now, to tell the truth, Mum. In fact, he said the Queen herself had just ordered one. Uh, two, I mean, actually. One for herself, for her kitchen, and the other one as uh, a present, actually, for, uh, for Paul McCartney, because she's a very big fan of his, and she's bought all his records twice, one to play and one to keep in mint condition, because they have these uh, big memorabilia sales, right, at Sotheby's. And if you've got them in, shut up and eat your tea. And with that, my mum placed a bowl of vegetable soup in front of me. And we pulled our chair up, and it was my turn to say, Grace, um, for what the Lord has brought from the supermarket for us tonight, uh, may we be truly grateful. Thank you very much, God. Amen. And with that, we both picked our spoons up, and we dipped them into the soup, and we just raised them up to our mouths, when... <laughs> Oh, did you hear that, Frank? Eh, uh, what was that, Mum? Eh, uh, that sort of, eh, uh, wow, The table just did it then. Oh, you mean that, eh, uh, Oh, that's a uh, special, eh, uh, warning, Mum. Special warning about what, Frank? Oh, Mum! Don't you read the papers? All modern tables have that built into them now, to tell the truth. Well, what does this warning mean then, Frank? 
Well, to tell the truth, it's actually a warning about uh, danger, Mum. Ooh, what sort of danger, Frank? Well, it's a sort of uh, danger warning that uh, if something... Uh, oh, blimey! The one exploded out of the oven and Des was off. And my mum, she couldn't believe her eyes. Oh, uh, isn't it marvellous what they build into tables these days, mum, I says as I ran after Des. It's a sort of uh, special device, mum, to save food in case of explosion. A walk-in table. What a brilliant idea. <laughs> Well, I managed to catch Des about four blocks from our house, right? And where my mum's tablecloth was, I don't know. And I was just wondering what to do when, oh blimey, a police car came round the corner. You probably get a uh, solid uh, for life with no sweets, no television or comics for hippopotamus rustling. Oh, it was Constable Chicocky, our local timpoli, Bobby. Hello, Frank. What on earth have you got there? He asked, looking at Des, who was still dressed in my best suit. Um, well, uh, to tell the truth, officer, um, but before I could answer, he said, Well done, Frank. That hippo has been on the loose since early this morning when it escaped from a travelling circus. I suppose you'll be after the reward money. Uh, uh, reward money? Uh, uh, yes, officer, I will. Uh, uh, to tell the truth, I was just on my way to the police station with Des. I mean, this wild, dangerous hippopotamus. <laughs> well, I was quite sad, really. And I think Des was, too, as the two men from the circus drove him off in a cage on the back of their lorry. But at least I had 50 quid as compensation reward money, which means I could buy my mum a brand new kitchen table, a new tablecloth, a shampoo, and a bed sheet as well, and get my suit mended, and my Thunderbird 2 remote control model with detachable pod, and still have five pounds left. So, the cold, hard facts of business are, you only need to find about, say, uh, 20 hundred thousand hippopotamuses to become a millionaire instead of 20 zillion billion golf balls. So if you're thinking of setting up in business, I suggest you go for hippopotamuses. Uh, but don't forget, number one, always give your hippopotamus a fantastic name. Uh, number two, never, under any circumstances, let your mum know you've got a hippopotamus. And number three, never put a hippopotamus in the wardrobe until you've taken your Thunderbird 2 model out first. Do that and you can't fail. Thank you. Well, that's a fantastic tale. Heard it with me fabulous pen. Oh, I think you will all agree that I tell a fantastic story. There's more for you. A fantastic side too. With Frank's fantastic tales, you know there is.